Hey, well, it looks like we're about to start Loudy Anarchid versus Skazi Black Duchy. And the sponge also forgotten to update Goof. Oh, there we go. I was going to say, I forgot to update the Flipstep Norm game. Yeah, so Flipstep and Norm in the finals. Goof, I got him in the bronze match. Whoever wins this next one fights Flipstep and Norm, who have proven to be quite powerful, but I think they might. I'm curious how they're going to fight against whoever wins this. Because I have this feeling that they were really, really focused on how to beat Goofrog Aquinim. And I'm not sure how much they practiced against whatever Anakin Lowry do. Because Goofrog and Aquinim have a very known style. Do they? I, I think their strengths are known. I think a, a pair like Lorien and Arkid are incredibly strong one versus one players. You can't know which of those two to focus down. That's the and thing. which, you know. You can't play their strengths and weaknesses. You can't just say, okay, we've got Google Frogs Commander now, switch to, switch to you know, Aquanim. You, versus an Arcad and Lari, any one of them could play the entire game themselves. And the thing is, Google Frog Aquanim, they have a specific style. Google Frog typically, as we saw in these games and we saw before as well, Google Frog will typically run interference for Aquanim to build up in the back. That's typically how they play. But then they'll also do this thing where Aquanim will later on in the game pump a lot of resources into Google Frog with tanks or within a big assault force and crack that middle of the map. Yeah, but they play for the mid game because what they're trying mm. to do, they're trying to basically Google Frog tanking while Aquanim's building up and then Aquanim pushes forward and Google, like, powers Google Frog in order to go for the win. Mm. But Anakin and Lowry, they're just probably going to play one, like, 1v1v2, basically. Or they could very well play that and it would still work out. They're, and playing 2v2, like, I don't know how they're going to play, how much they're going to coordinate. They probably will coordinate a decent mm. amount because they're, I'm sure they're experienced in the team games. But it could even just be two 1v1s that they're each individually playing and not fighting each other, and it would still be their win, or at least an easier time for them. Black Duchy and Skazi, though, they're both in the... Um, they're both very strong players, and they're both very strong team players in particular. Yes. Um, yeah, exactly. But so they might have some tricks up their sleeve where Lowry is actually... A little bit lower. Laurie and Anarchy are actually below Skazi in the team. I don't think Laurie plays much team games at all. Mm. So uh, we'll see whether. I think honestly, in versus two versus two, one versus one skill is going to matter more. But Black Duchy and Skazi, they're both in the Mumble team, Mumble, uh, Mumble clan. So maybe they'll be coordinating better through Mumble, and they'll be able to come up with something which will be, you know, it'll be interesting. Or to see. this is also an option. Anarchid is just smurfing Lori, and they've always been smurfs, and he's <laughs> playing this tournament on his own. That, that, yes, that's that's an option, yes. I suppose. But we already said either one of those players could take it on their own. That doesn't really exactly. change anything. And nothing's built up. Okay, they're just working on their initial setup. Lori has some uh, factory picks that he, he likes a lot. He's, he... I don't think he actually likes hover play, um, but he picks them because he doesn't like them, and uh, he's always been a tank specialist, so mm. it'll be interesting to see him pull out either of those. Yeah, so Anarchid looks like they're taking Norm's place from game from the last semifinals. Not that they're going to go for air, probably. I expect that. Uh, Lowry taking Flipstip's place. Hmm. They weren't even watching the last game, by the way. They were actually in their own room, just waiting for us. That's purely coincidental. It's also coincidental it's the same colors, too. <laughs> While Skaji and Black Duchy, I'm not sure where they are. Hmm. Okay, so Louder's going vehicles, Anarchid. Hmm. Okay, so Anarchid is going in for air. Because apparently Lowry is worse for air. And... Yeah. Oh, so Black Touchy and Scuzzy are... Looks like they're trying to do... Black Touchy taking the south with vehicles and Scuzzy going north with jump or spider. That will be interesting if that happens. I could see spider. We saw it before. I could see Cloaky working as well. A little surprised they don't go for air, though, because that's a thing. But then again, if they do go for a decent amount of anti-air, if they go for Cloaky, that would give them the Gremlins. That'd be a huge boost. Gremlins are good, but on a map this large, it's hard to field any um, ground AA effectively. You need to sort of... You still need to stick close to your base, build a lot of defenders, these yeah. things which can be, can be 
death on a map this large. Okay, so Scousy going up to the same place as Anarchid going for spiders, while La Anarchid going same place as with Airplane. Not sure why the game got paused, but anyway. I should point out also in the chat that Black Touching and Scousy were pointing out, oh yeah, Loud is going to go hovers. <laughs> nope! <laughs> I can see why you think that, but nope! That's not happening. Not today. Larry's uh, choices in, in flat map play with vehicles, hovers, or tanks. He's good with all of them. So, mm -hmm. yeah. He's, he's good, in, especially in those factories. Yeah. He plays lots of Red Comet and things like that. So Yeah, any of the flat map factories. It's just Hovercraft was popular the last couple tournaments, but not now. Not anymore. It's still kind of popular, but it's not the overwhelming popularity it once was. Possibly just because of overplay. I don't know. I haven't really seen anything too weak about it, but it looks like we're getting Dart Flea just swarming through the center from Black Dutch and Hiskazi right off the bat. While Swift's trying to deal with this, Swift's not going to have a problem dealing with this at all. Take out the Fleas, take out the yeah. Darts. Not Swift's sure. going to be really strong. Why all the Darts? I mean, that's a lot of metal to throw away. That's not that bad. It's just 40 apiece, and it really oh, that's true, gives yeah. you just, uh, information and the option to uh, it does, but that Lotus doesn't do much. Oh, the constructor. Oh, yeah, it might might get the constructor. Hard to no, say. it won't it, get it. But it, it won't. It, it's good to set up a darts the way that um was done previously, and where you set them up in positions where you know the enemy's going to expand into. Yeah, but these swifts have complete knowledge here, and they're just going to snipe them out one at a time. Their swifts are incredibly strong against scouts. They're they're okay against raiders, but scouts they just demolish. And that's the thing. And also. Although I think darts actually have the same DPS per cost as daggers. But that's per cost, as in like two or three doubts. Two or three darts have the same DPS as a dagger. Darts can be very very strong. You can put them in mass and you can use them similarly to daggers. I mean, they're pretty good mess, to offensive power. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. You get them in cost with daggers, but, but that's individually, and that yeah. means they're easy to smash with anti AoE or just by attrition. They're going to yeah, lose the well, attrition war. The hit points are quite low, so that's one of the reasons why um, uh, Swifts can snipe them out so easily, just mm -hmm. like that. Uh, if we have some borrowed fleas, which might do better, because obviously they're a little less vulnerable to Swifts when they die incredibly fast, but he's borrowed them around the map and he might be able to make something happen with that, but it looks like there's defenders coming up with most of these expansions, so I, I doubt the fleas are going to be able to do much. Well, they're going to be able to know what's going on. That's the big thing. They know that Louder's commander's in the southwest. Yeah. They know whether or not the high-value expansions are being taken. That's a big thing, if they know the high-value mechs are being taken. And they also have... Yeah, but a, well, other than that, they don't have any, really any knowledge. Skazi and Black Dutch here at this point investing quite heavily into AA, and they're not expanding. They haven't gone beyond three mechs. This could be really dangerous for them. This is, yeah, quite a... Well, they're clearly I would say to say lost uh, move, or lost uh, game losing move. Yeah. They cannot uh, this. Yeah. From this point on, uh, the blue team, or Anakit and Lori, can play defensively and expand until they have half the map and start attacking. I could definitely see them doing that. I could also see Skazi and Black Dutchie really trying for a fast rush. Because that seems to be what they're trying to go for with the darts initially, and... They seem to be trying to go for that right now with the Scorchers. Although losing one of their Crashers in the process, why did they throw the Crashers? Oh, in front so of bad. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't think Black Dutchie is uh, used to playing this type of uh, game. Uh, yeah, don't Open map, 1v1, Scorchers. Uh, he's more of a team player. I was thinking that he's probably large team games, so do one lane and that's it. You have your lane, that's all you do. Well, this is what uh, Lori uh, does best. Yeah, oh, this yeah. is this is very much Laurie's style. This is very much, you know, where he's comfortable. These flat maps like this. Flat areas like this. Well, I mean, Skazi and Black Touch if they lose, get a counter pick. Not sure what they picked. Yeah, they don't sort of have a specialist map like um, Rymark. Rymark and Aphelios did. I'm quite disappointed by Skazi's lack of constructors. So he made his first constructor now. <laughs> wow. And this uh, gross overproduction of energy. Yeah, trying to go for the overdrive. I mean, I can sort of see that minimum 1.6, but yeah, no, <laughs> just no. That's not that's not good enough. However, I do see that they are starting to expand somewhat. But yeah, Scassi, 
I'm just surprised they didn't go for some expansion because they were kind of planning on taking the north. That was part of their initial chat plan, was take the north. I'm surprised they didn't really follow through on that one. I have. What, sorry? Okay. I think you're starting to cut out. Zach Doth. Zach Doth? Okay, anyway. Zach Doth. Yeah, okay. Let's Zach Doth. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh. Okay, well, anyway. Anarchy is getting a repair pad. That's that's pretty big. Taking the north pretty hard. I think this will be just one shot in. Scott's is going to try to go for this one shot. Try to get the Hermit in, try to get the Venoms in, and if that fails, I don't know what they have left. I don't think they have much. His units are too slow. He's just going to get slowly bombed out with attrition. He doesn't have any um, A to back it up. He's only moving the air unit up now. And here come the Scorchers to just clean this out. Yeah, I don't see this going anywhere. And then over to the south side, <laughs> Lowry has easily twice the number of Scorchers as Black Duchy. Easily. Yeah, it's just the economy at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. Black Dutchy hasn't even taken the... He, he tried to, but he lost them to a, a single dart, the um, uh, the expansion yeah, to the south, south of him. Southeast. Trying to take it again now after Defender, but that's just... That's the thing to take real quick. Like, take it, take it again, take it again, until you actually hold it. Just keep taking it. That's not really done. Although, I have to say that Skazi's scouting with the fleas is pretty good. Yeah, he the has fleas... fleas are... everywhere on, on a lot of locations. Yeah, those are being yeah. used properly. And actually, this one's punching a naked expansion by Iron Kid Spider Factory. Though, Skazi's not really paying attention to it. Yeah, Skazi's now switching to air, while Anarchid switches to spider. So this could equal up the game a little bit, if he uses his air well. I don't know, Lowry's taking that south. If With proper use of possibly shadows, I mean the shadows, of phoenixes. Shadows being ravens. But proper use of phoenixes might do the trick. Or Thunderbirds. I think yeah, at this point, actually be better, an Anarchid... And Arcade and Lowry definitely have an, uh, an army advantage, but the economy is actually staying relatively stable. So as long as they can clear out these Scorchers and um, do something they've, with um, Skazi's air, they're, they're, they're still in the game. Yeah. They've caught up. You were right about that. It's because uh, they took the, those two clusters are free and taking out one of the clusters of uh, Lowry, which evens up uh, the income. Well, they'll soon uh, get access to the the big maxes in the center, and they're rebuilding mm -hmm. the ones they lost. So uh, it's just temporarily that they're on equal eco ground. Yeah, here we see the Thunderbird coming in from Anarchia, yeah, which, where, which is really what Skazi needs to needs to have in this situation. To and hopefully, that'll enemies. be the hint. Like, oh yeah, by the way, that's what you do, and it's right now not. Right now, we just see three Swifts, well, four Swifts, and that'll be it. Nothing else has been queued so far. Yeah, he's trying to rest um, air control by just building a lot of bombers and taking out um, an Arcid's air, which is reasonable because at this point, an Arcid has no AA and no fighters. And so he, he can, it, but yeah, so definitely, Skazi needs to build a lot of fighters. I think it's probably a, a good idea at this point, as long as Black Duchy can hold on. And he's building uh, levelers at this point, which should help with that. Yeah, Black Duchy going for the leveler crasher Scorcher, while Lowry goes for Ravager leveler. So they're basically going to be just neck and neck for a while. Kind of who loses their Scorchers first, I think, will probably decide it. Yeah, um, an Arcid's almost finished at the Crab, which is going to be a big <laughs> he's, problem. He's building a Wyvern, or a Lichel. Yeah, that, that's... Yeah, that happens. That was in ages. <laughs> a Crab and a Wyvern, I think, um, it's going to be it's going to be hell for the Spider Force. The Spider Force just cannot stop a Crab and a Wyvern. Nope. But with the fighters, they might be able to. It's just the crab is the biggest problem. If they can bomb it out while it's moving, then it's not so bad. But the odds of that happening are very low. However, Thunderbird mm. is being built. So Skazi is going for that. They look like they are aiming to break the center. I think it's all right. Lori is taking the center now, but he's only taking 50%. Um, so... That's really... He can afford to take a lot more than that now with the well, army advantage right now. Right so if Black Touch... If, if Black Duchy can um, stabilize um, and Skazi can has more metal in the north, if they can, if uh, I don't think Laurie's taking enough territory now with the army advantage he has because it's stabilizing again. You can see the Black Duchy has as many scorches now as Laurie does, so he's really managed to stabilize that game. For now, but Laurie has both high value mechs in the south, 
Skazi is taking one of the high value mechs to the north, but Anarchid could easily stop that. I mean, the crab's just not going in the right direction. Oh we could easily stop that. Yeah, they're only really important if you're overdrive them, the high, high value maxes. I mean, they d definitely do matter. But yeah, the crab's going to be the problem. <laughs> that and, commander and oh, uh, wait, the crab. Never mind. Wow. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, so Raven has spotted it. They know about the expansion right here. And the crab is up as well, and another raven goes down. So at least the tarantulas are doing a nice job getting rid of the ravens. Oh, what are those ravens <laughs> doing? <laughs> and he still hasn't they revealed are, his air. They are seeking to die. They have lost the will to live. Yeah, that happens sometimes. I know. It's, it's really sad. It's really quite depressing when ravens just lose the will to live and fly the way into a bunch of missiles. Riven's been cancelled. I think he, I think he's focused on the crab. He's he's big sort of winning the game unit rather than using the relying on the uh, Riven, which makes sense. And that's a little bit unfortunate because I would have liked to see a Wyvern throughout. But I think it would just would have been not enough against the Scorch. Like, what would you have? I guess I guess firing on the main base might have worked, or firing into Skazi's base. Mm. Actually, firing into Skazi's base would have made a huge blow. Skazi's building a spy anything. now. A spy is the perfect thing to build in this situation. Oh yeah, you can build a spy. Right yeah, he needs something to follow up with that. He needs like a bunch of fleas. And uh, yeah, he's doing an air scout as well. Uh, Skazi's doing an air scout, which should... I don't know if it's going to reveal anything useful. It might be able to take it a bomber or two, but there's not a huge bomber force in the back, which is waiting to be sniped. Yeah, the one yeah he's, he's boosting back to deal with it. The one well, thing I those, could see... Those nanos. <laughs> oh, glory. The one thing I could see, though, is that this crab, it needs to be stunned out when it's moving, I think. Unless I'm wrong, yeah, it would need to be sent out while moving, which is going to be a bit tricky to pull off. But we'll see. Yeah, you need time and patience, but you can just wait. You can just sit just out of range, and as soon as it unfolds, you can stun it. And if he does that, he'll be all right. But uh, uh, Laurie's oh. Laurie switched to level of Ravager and is now bursting down um, uh, Black Duchy's um, front line. Well, yeah, I mean, they switched to the level of Ravager some time ago. They're actually level of Wolverine now, but now we're seeing the Ravagers pay off from a couple minutes ago. Mm. Tearing everything down. And the Wolverine's coming in as well, and everything no. in the north on top of that. Round two of the Scorches. <laughs> but yep. still, there are Black Dutchie still has an army which matches uh, Dutchie's army. Actually, uh, it's exceeding uh, it. By metal value, it's exceeding it. I don't think there's a Commander Morph. Let's see, Black Dutchie... Nope, no yeah. Manamorphs. Of course, there is that crap from uh, Anarchid still <laughs> in the center as well. Okay, paralyze it. No, he wants to wait. Yeah, ah. paralyze, paralyze. Yes, 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 yes. Let's see, Ooh. it is going to... Oh, Perfect. just uh, barely no, bad no, timing. No, 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 no. But still, that at least uh, opens that up. That at least allows the Scorchers to do their job without the crab getting in the way. And the levelers in particular are going to do their job. And even then, the crab still goes down, still yes. gets taken out, uh, and Thunderbird follow-up. One, nice combo punch. there. <laughs> and pushing uh, Lowry back to the Stardust. To make this work uh, into a counterattack. Yes. Pushing into the Stardust. That's the furthest it'll go. Or What? He still wants to try. No, Black Touchy is pushing a bit too hard here. Losing a lot of Scorchers. And like I said, the Scorchers... Yeah. Whoever loses Scorchers first is probably going to be the one out of this, ultimately. He's trying he to take down uh, some turrets and a, and, a, and a bit of the armor, but in the end, he loses this fight. Yeah. yeah capitalizing on the Thunderbird was really what he was trying to do there, but the coordination was just a little bit yeah. off. Yeah, that but should have maybe been cutting their losses. I think they should have been maybe happy with the scale of the crab. There's a second yeah. crab, by the way. Yep, the second crab is about halfway done. No, it's shooting. And another Wyvern actually is queued oh, up. Yeah, Lab they're free Kid after eight has another Wyvern. After eight more scouts. Sorry, eight more... Oh, yeah, right. there's a crab. Uh, another crab in production. Wyvern being planned out after seven more Swifts. And we have Wolverine versus Wolverine Wars in the middle of the map now. Ah, ah that's so boring. <laughs> yeah. It's so boring and painful in the ears. It's just Wolverine right, mines firing anyone. at Wolverine mines over and over and over. It's just they're fighting Although, by proxies. Black Duchy is winning. Actually, Black Duchy is pushing back Lowry's, Wolver Lowry's Wolverines and pushed back the halfway point. So able to get those high value mechs out of Lowry's control. Bunch of redbacks cleaning up some scorches in the north here too, but they but need to deal with that cra those crabs. Here's another spy. Yes, and got the, got the other crab. He needs to bomb it now, or hit it, or s with something. Uh, yeah, with all these swifts, maybe. Becoming dangerous now. I mean, there's 34 he's swifts. Pulling the red, he's pulling the red bats back. He's got 19 seconds. 18, 18, 17. That's enough time. 
That's enough time, but the second yep. crab is being a bit of a problem. Yeah, no. Second crab will pull redbacks to pieces. No, he needs to pull those the, the redbacks back. They're going to get hit, hit by the crab. Ugh. Ah, that's painful. And at the center of the map, yep. the wolverines continue to push back, but that crab... That crab has got one second left, and it is still in the perfect position, taking out those redbacks, and it does go down, though. That one crab does go down. Hermit's still alive. Another redback elder just goes down to a crab. Oh, a nice second infiltrator. Yeah, the, the, that last crab made cost. It, it doesn't have DPS to take these things out in a timely fashion. Yeah. And then another shot in here where the recluse is just doing their job. That's the big one. And what over the south, Lowry... Lowry retaken to the south, though. This is really important. Lowry is getting a bunch of levelers just to tank through the mines. The Wolverine's pushing to the north, levelers pushing to the south. And there's not much that Black Tachy has to stop this. Uh -huh. He has a Newton. Oh. Is it? Really? Oh, yeah, they do. Okay, there, there is a Newton. There is that. That's totally useless. It, it can't even hit mines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, the you know, token really good. But what he needs to do is he needs to mix his red backs with venoms because venoms. Once you hit something with a spy, the venom can yeah, then lock them down. Stun. Mm. Yeah, it's just locked in the corner. That's it. They're done. He's pushing back, but he should probably go crabs himself at this point, and that's what he's doing. He's making his first crab. Yeah, and actually, we see a heavy tank switch from Lowry going for Commander early going tremor. down in the north. It probably no, it's probably going to stay up. Yeah, we have a tremor down in the north. A crab getting hit pretty hard by what Wolverine mines. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty hard. Big. And with the tremor coming in here, that's going to be a problem. Actually, the crab's down. But the tremor's coming tremor. in here from Lowry. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a tremor. That's, okay, it's, uh... that's an interesting pick. I think maybe the Wolverines, it'll clear out the mines and start killing the Wolverines, a big pack of them. I think it's not a bad choice, actually. Yeah, just take out the Wolverines, take out whatever defenses are there. Just finish it off, because at this point, Lowry can't really hold. I mean, even with that leveler attack that came in before, that's not really gone through. The Wolverines are still in force back. We still have a giant no man's land in the center. And similarly to the North Anarchids taking up all the valuable expansions. But still, they're economically fairly even thanks to all this all this overdrive here. I mean, Skazi is like two and a half yeah. times. The, uh, Lori and Anarchid kind of stop building eco. While uh, Skazi just keeps growing his economy slowly. While at the same time, we see that there is, well, Blatoshi and Ant Lowry are still even. That tremor hasn't been deployed yet. Train Chainsaw coming up as well on top of that. Where is that tremor? The tremor's in the middle of the map. It's starting oh, to Oh, yeah, I can just the, barely uh, see the projectile. Wolverines are pulling back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the, the attack come on. Come on. It's very interesting seeing this pure artillery war. <laughs> I'm, uh, you don't really see this in zero case. Artillery versus no, artillery. It's not all really. tremors and wolverines and, and, and yeah. impalers even. It's like every artillery unit in, oh, in these factories. Okay, now I see it. It's hard to wolverines, uh, act more like skirmishes now. But. Yeah, I think I like the change because they weren't really used before, but I'm not sure I like Wolverine versus Wolverine as a match. No, no. So the dynamic of the unit. The, the factory really needs a skirmisher, though, because all it has is Dominatrix, which just has crappy mechanics, if you ask me. <laughs> they pour, yeah, they're all attacking. weird one. They're oh, pouring Anarchist. Wolverine mines into the one spot. And Anarchid's commander getting stunned out with a bunch of Hermits to take it out. So Anarchid about to lose their commander. Not the biggest deal at this stage in the game. It wasn't really morphed. But it's still worth noting Anarchid will lose their commander right off. And that's actually most of their workers. The build power to the north. And Black Tachy's still holding. Now, is there anything, any end game? Any striders, nuke silos, silencers, something? Anything? No. No, there isn't. It is increasingly getting to that state, isn't it? Once you get crabs and, you know, you're starting to spam crabs and you have these huge artillery 14 balls. bombers. Yeah, these are going to help a lot against those crabs. Oh, yeah. That's... But even then, it's just... you got to have something to break this. And I don't see Dante's. I don't see nukes. I, don't, I could see a silencer right now. Like, I would not be surprised if one of the players built a silencer. Also, why is I don't see the uh, singularity reaction. Oh, that's true. You need nice. singularity too. But we're almost at that stage anyway of Singularity Reactors. And a proxy Black Duchy Heavy Tank Factory as well. Not much has been built from that, there's been a couple... No, no. Oh, it's Tremors as well! Tremors. Black Duchy going for their own Tremors! So, why not make a Behemoth now? 
I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think I think a behemoth wouldn't be too bad. Some more. There's very little established defenses they have. They're, you know, because there's so much artillery on the field now. They, they haven't built. They almost no static defense. Except the north and the north. A lot of it's being lost to all these hermits and redbacks. And this is only game one. And this is only 20 minutes in. Wow. Well, I have stuff to do today, people. Come on. <laughs> it's amazing how much a um, uh, how much a zero K game can progress in 20 minutes, isn't it? Where we're always talking, already talking about end game. This is yeah. just such a complex. If you just zoom out and look at the map and everything that's going on now, we have in the north a uh, Riven coming yes. in. It's pulled. It's pulled a, a crab down off the cliff in that in that. Ah, uh, it just fell to its death. Ah, that was yeah. It took, too. it took impulse damage. Lots of reapers. How many swifts are there? 33 swifts. That could have taken that wyvern, no problem. Yeah, he needs to be paying attention. It's getting to that point now where there's bumps. just so much it's going uh, on. Uh, Although Lowry, I think it's taking Lowry and Anchor slowly. It's going for it. Slowly taking it. Oh, he's taking the diffusion in uh, Lowry's base, not in Anarchy's. Oh. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean uh, Skazi. Yeah, they're going for the, with the with these ravens right here. At this point, Laurie's made Reapers, though, and Reapers are going to completely shrug off those Wolverine attacks. They're going to be able to plow through that. Once he's got enough of them that he feels confident, he can just walk in there. But um, yeah. Black Dutch is building up his own. What but just happened he, to those? Uh, I didn't see a single bomb drop. They got knocked out by Swifts. Seriously, all of them? Yeah, all of them. I saw the, the Shadow's turn. I don't know. They just got knocked out by Swifts. Oh, wow. Didn't even get a chance to drop their bombs and take out that fusion. Which would have been a moderate damage thing. I mean, it wouldn't have been huge. Might have taken out one of the energy pylons, but it probably wouldn't have changed anything. Skazi has about as much energy as the Anarchids and Lowry combined. And is that Scott? Anarchids going for no Lowry's going. For, sorry, no, it is. It is Anarchid. Anarchids going for Athena's. They died, but still a couple of Athena's because why not? And then they get killed. And mass hermits coming in because why not? But then they also getting killed. You can see everyone's trying to ramp up their economy now, and they're really starting to think, right, this is getting to the end game. We're not getting past 50 percent This is like the math is just staying at 50%. It will not budge. It just keeps swinging back and forth. So they're <laughs> starting to think, right, I, I'm not going to get any more territory. But Lori has, has constructors. He has the build power to build anything anywhere. Yeah. Mostly just using pylons to get the overdrive up to just get their metal up. And they're already almost at 100 metal. And they have... How many reverns do they even have? They have at least two at this point. They have two. Big fleet of ravens coming through again to take out the, the crabs in the middle of the map. Yeah, 21 ravens coming through and a doomsday machine that's not quite what I was thinking, <laughs> but yeah. Bit of a waste of the bombs there. Could have probably that doomsday out machine that. needs to be taken down. That doomsday machine, if you can power it with the power on and start creeping those forward, is going to make it very difficult to dislodge. Yeah, and I don't see anything. Any end game stuff is coming. No, no end game stuff coming from Skazi. I think a Reaper Ball is uh, serious end game stuff. That's true. I agree with that. And it's more like how to counter that. But it looks like oh, Tremors are being used to take out the Reaper Ball. They are getting hit much. hard. I don't know. That Tremors not really doing too much ultimately. The Reaper Ball is just shrugging it off. One of the Reapers is taking a lot of damage to the rest of them. Doesn't matter. The Reapers are going through with impunity. And that Tremor's about no, to die. No mobile anti-air, and there are a lot of shadows coming, but half of them are not reloaded. That's true. Uh. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, yeah, that's right. Half of them are just completely without ammo. And this isn't exactly a situation where you need decoys. However, Lowry pulling back the Ravagers... Uh, the, Raven, the Reapers pulling back for Lowry. This is very surprising. And over the northwest, we're getting a massive assault in for Skazi. already taking out the north side, taking out more stuff with the Hermits, but... Thunderbird come in with no follow-up. So just waits 20 seconds and then back to killing everything. Viscazi doing a nice harassment there. But still not quite enough. Good good shot though, and is keeping the center Black is keeping the center just held. Between the Impalers and the Tremor and the Wolverines, mostly the Impalers and Tremor. That's being held out. No. I think right now Laurie's forces in the middle is it, he has a very strong force here, but he's very afraid of losing it. 
because he knows if he loses at this point, he's not going to have anything to beat back. This huge artillery force, which is going to be able to bombard and just slowly push back his line with impunity. So he's just mm. seeding ground right now. He's just sort of moving back and forward in front of the line to attract artillery fire because he can't afford to build any static defenses. He's trying to build a static defense behind his main army, and it's just getting it's just getting so many missiles and shots from so much artillery pumped into it. Yeah, and this chainsaw is about to go down wow. too, and that goes down. That's that's the ravens coming in with that chainsaw is down. Something happened in the top left corner. Some, oh yeah, like I said, Skazi, Skazi came in with a bunch of units, a bunch of hermits, and it looks like Anarchy tried to bury them down, but obviously it's not going to work against hermits, but still, they got Thunderbird and killed. Managed to get rid of the north side, though. Well, Skazi, what is your next target for bombing just random stuff? <laughs> it's all the workers here. Not a bad target. Took it only a couple uh, he of them, though. Hits a lot of stuff. Nothing in particular. <laughs> yeah. Trying to take out some of the Reapers to at least weaken them so the artillery can finish them off. But yeah, taking out the workers is probably the best idea. Because that's another weapon goes down in the north. <laughs> he has too much workers anyway. Jeez, how much does he have? I'm not sure. I think. Well, the 17 31, of those. Uh, yeah, 31 Masons and 21 Welders. So somewhere around 50. Lois finally, finally decided that he needs, to, he needs to push now and ever. And he's barreling down with his Reapers down the middle of that because he's huge. Constructor Ball has arrived. His Constructor Ball is marching down, building behind these Reapers while the Reapers just clear up and push back the artillery. So the, well, there's the, absolutely yeah. no point in building defenders against so yeah, many. Yeah, but so defenders much. to me are just the wrong choice against this degree of artillery. All these, all these artillery is excellent against defenders. Doomsday and Annihilator creep time. Yeah, pretty much. Although it looks like, yeah, the Doomsday is up and the Screamer being built up as well, but not anywhere near finished. Actually, no, the second screamer being built up that is near finished. And Anakin was actually asking in the in game chat about if it's nuke time. Which is an, it's a valid question, and I'd say, yeah, you're getting pretty close. At least tactical nukes. Not sure about silencer, but definitely tactical nukes would be worth it. Fire a few napalm missiles just in the middle I of the army. They, they were so the players few. should be happy to have the computers to run this uh, game. Yeah, I think we are. I'm getting 10 FPS on my machine, which is already a bit of a beast, but yeah, this is... Uh, you're also uh, encoding video. Uh, That's true. The CPU yeah. is being used quite a bit of encoding video. I, I oh, don't think Napalm missiles... Napalm missiles might be able to... Oh my god. So many Wolverines coming in. They might be able to clear out the Wolverines, which would help. But um, all those Reapers there are not going to be hurt by Napalm missiles That's at true. all. And there are very few static defenses to be taken out. Over to the and north. maybe the Wolverines can even walk out. Over to the north, we're getting another attack in from Skazi trying to take this out. The Doomsday Machine is in place, but it's not going to be up for another 20 seconds, and that's, once again, 20 seconds too long as the Hermits come in to take that out. Although more Wolverine attacks. Though the Wolverine attack's missing because they can't hit the side of the cliff easily. They're targeting just off to the side, but not quite enough, and that Wolverine goes down. Swift takes out this pylon. Nice shot there. So that, that pylon gone means the Doomsday Machine is nowhere near as powerful as it could have been. Still has the heat rays, though, but not powered. Yeah, it's out. not going to be, it's not going to be enough against all those redbacks. I, don't, I think yeah. the redbacks are going to be able to power it down. Although, no, no, he's actually get, trying to get into point blank range. But at least a fight command. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, doomsday machine does a lot of doomsday. Oh yeah, they could really afford powered. And now to put some doomsday machines in the middle of the map would be really beneficial. I think. I, I think you wouldn't want to put up a missile tower until you do <laughs> develop a solid four defense. Thirty-two. Good God. Wow. Yeah. That's. That's just insane. It's Goliath time, Strider time, Nuke time. That's so we got an, uh, ourselves an old-fashioned Delta Siege Dry game, people. Apparently yeah, we, I do. Think, I think we do. <laughs> this is the old-fashioned stress test. Although I was actually never here for that. So this is actually quite new to me. Although the Screamer is doing their thing. Actually, no, not Screamer's Chainsaw is doing their thing. And Strider Hub for Anarchid. We have a Strider Hub. Singularity for Anarchid. What, what? Top left. Oh yeah, there is, it's under construction. Give me another few minutes. I'm not sure that that's the best position to put it in. I, I don't think that that's very defended. But at least it's no. a wave, it won't explode all over thing. And then over to the south, tons of defenders to no avail, and the construction's getting whittled down. Hard to tell, but it does look like Lowry's still getting whittled down thanks to everything coming in. Other than that, I wouldn't say there's... Wow, much is there else? 
I mean, there's the Strider Hub, which is only really being used as a giant... That's being used as a giant caretaker. That's about it. Full Sprouts hasn't started to build its own stuff. Seriously, Dante or Scorpion are just perfect right now. I almost say it's too late for Dante. Dante's yeah, really you're good right. when you can switch out into mid game from mid game units. But once you have a huge Reaper Ball, I mean they're, they're great against things like you know Rock Rocco's, Zeus, Ravages, but huge Reaper Balls with Goliath and Tremors and stuff. Yeah, it's more of an ultimate. Yeah, I don't think that it. unless you're doing a Dante drop, which is can still be very strong. Yeah, I'd be more into Scorpions for their anti heavy power. Um, ultimatums, I think almost you, they just get instantly revealed by all the mines. Oh, that's true. So, that's um, I oh, look catap uh, um, oh, catapults be another one, but yeah, I'd say yeah, scorpion. Dantha, catapult, yeah, scorpion. Or if you're really feeling just decadent, you go for the bantha. Yeah, I think actually bantha would be a really solid choice at this point. I mean, it's only Is that far like, in. Yeah. Okay, we gotta drop the font size so you can see the metal. We're at over 100 metal for Lowry and Energy. Like, we're at the 200 someone metal mark. Scars and Black Dutchie are ahead in army value, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're way ahead. Like, total of about 50,000. I never thought they'd say that much. 50,000 metal compared to 44,000 metal. My goodness. No wonder I'm running at 12 FPS. But anyway. Yeah, the artillery really. Uh, Lowry didn't know what new. didn't know what to do with the. Wolverines against yeah, Anarka, Anarka and Lori at this point are really focusing on the south. You can see that Anarka's uh, Crab and Recluse force, and mm -hmm. why is he using Recluses at this point? I'm not, I'm not sure if he should really be using Recluses. He's really pushing in to try and break this, but he's losing in the north. Skazi's taking heaps of territory with just a, a simple sort of the main base. low level spider push. Skazi is taking uh, out the main base. There are quite a lot of wyverns still, three of them. Oh, there are, oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, Skazi is threatening the main base, not taking it out yet. What is that missile doing? <laughs> it's missing. It's <laughs> missing it's for an air burst. Uh, I, I never saw that. I never seen that before. That's a new one. And what? Okay, now it hits. That was weird. The red bag must have some odd disjointed collision detection. Like the target box must not yeah. be where the hitbox is. I don't know, I've, no, I think it's, yeah, no, maybe it's firing outside of LOS or something, because the LOS update's slow when it's shooting at a, I don't know why that's happening, that's strange. Maybe. That's but here we see the crab, I, I, I'm not sure I really like Scott, Scott's is taking so much territory, but I really don't like his choice, choice of redbacks here, because the redbacks are so easy to snipe, um, they're not very good against the crab, and yeah, he's just getting, he's just, he's losing lots of them. I, although in this case, they he do actually take out the crab, uh... so, yeah, he has enough, but for cost. I think you'd be better off using crabs. Okay, so looks like Black Dutch are managing to finally get the momentum they need to push back. The Glass are doing a nice job dealing with this, but still the momentum they need is there. More spider forces coming in, just slowly but surely draining away. DDM coming up once again. But even then, it's not got a whole lot going for it. Oh, never mind! Thunderbird! Finishes things off, dies in the process. Thunderbirds save the day. Okay, so that's the CPU <laughs> that's primarily causing the the drop. The so it is the encoding of video. Otherwise, Black it's saying, FPS. he's dizzy and needs some water. I don't think he expected the game to be this intense. You could we can see though, in uh, in the middle, oh. there's actually he's. Sorry. Sorry, to interrupt. Southeast side silencers have been being built for about three minutes now. There actually is a silencer this game. It's actually happened. There are two I of them, I think it's going to work. There are two? Yeah. Both of them uh, are building one. Anarchid and uh, Skazi both are building a silencer. Oh, yeah. Anarchid is... Where's Anarchid silencer? Where's I don't Anarchid? see it. And it's a uh, base where, with a spider factory. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's also half done. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. Wow, that's that's really interesting. They both decided to do this there at the same time, or at least yeah, with the same and almost timing. almost the same timetable. So it, it's really what matters now is how much resources they can afford to pump into this. Because it's amazing how when you see a game like this, you know it needs a silence or something, some big super weapon. Because right. the game has been back and forth and back and forth and almost entirely mobile units. You know, it's not static defense lines. It's just these units swinging back and forth in the middle, and yet it stayed almost dead. Although, on 50% in the bottom Skazi of the map. Is going to see it? I don't know if Skazi's going to see it. 
Oops, that's the wrong player. Skazi, ha Skazi has not seen it yet. They didn't see it with that last force. With the Ravens coming in. Totally missed it. So Anakin None still has a chance. None of the players is uh, focusing it. Hmm? None of the players are focusing their silencer. No, although it looks like... Oh, those Goliaths uh, might actually uh, work out quite well. They don't die to the Wolverine, so they can be repaired. You don't yeah. uh, take attrition damage with uh, Goliaths. 12,000 health, you definitely wouldn't. But even then, with enough of the Ravens coming in, that's that's still a lot. Oh, come on. I, I would have made multiple uh, ultimatums at this point. Yeah, that Strider Hub has been entirely a caretaker. I'm really surprised it was built, honestly. I'm not sure what the idea was. Like, two Strider it's Hubs as caretakers. I think Anarchist thinks they're still building a 15 Ultimatum metal. in the south. Ultimatum in the no. south. <laughs> towards the, the impalers. There's those impalers. Boom. Wait, what? <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> Oh boy, that's uh, I think it made cost. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it probably made cost. I mean, it's not even close to dead yet, but still, just... Oh, but the the, the mines, the mines. Cloak. I really would not have ex expected it to be useful there, but yeah, it's it's because of all the mines and everything, you know, it's just so useless against the mines. Uh, is it going to get bombed? No. <laughs> is no. all the flags are going to... No, it lives. No, the flags stop that. And the silencer. It's another day. Uh, not quite yet. But yeah, the flags coming in <laughs> Eight there. Eight lives now. On top of that, though, still, I mean, I think they expect that the Strider Hub actually builds at 15 and not 10, because it used to build at 15. I guess they've changed that. I recall it building at 15 at some point. And, okay, at this point, Anarchid is. Sorry, Lowry, you're defending Anarchid's base with Reapers. That should stop the, stri the spider attacks. Pretty much put a stop to them. There's not much more that can be done with that. Yeah, yeah he really needs to do that because he was very close to too, having uh, his silencer revealed. The doomsdays, yeah, I think. Um, doomsday for the spiders. That's just not fair. Yeah, the silencer's up. Yes. So you can use spies on a doomsday actually, which works. But um, yeah, <laughs> when you you, you come <laughs> against the doomsday machine, it's time to go into big heavy weaponry. And I think if um, Black Dutch and Skazi either need to hear decide. Okay, we're going to do that too. We're going to put up a real big grid. We're going to get up... And they have tons of fusions in the back. But we're going to get up a, pro a proper grid. And we're going to put up our own defensive line. Put in annihilators. Put in behemoths. Or they need to put everything they can into just defending with mobile units and yeah. building the silencer Although, and finishing the silencer as fast as possible. Black Dutchy has a protector and a missile silo as well. So Black Dutchy is prepped for nukes. I don't see any protectors yet for Anarchid or Lowry. I don't see any on the map at all. I don't think they're prepped for that. So, actually, Black Tooth is going to have a slight advantage thanks to the nukes. But it'll be interesting yeah, to see how I that think, plays out. I think that um, it all depends on whether he nukes within the silencer, which I think there's a good chance that he will. And if he does that, if... Um, if Black Tooth nukes... The way it looks... Sorry, Skazi quite, nukes the silencer. That'll be it. That'll be game. If Skazi nukes within... If Skazi nukes... Yeah. Well, uh, no, I think that... The thing is, they'll both finish the nukes about the time. It's looking like it's going to be a dead even race. Yes. Yeah. And, and However, uh, Skazi has four bombers. Yeah, yeah, he does. He could suicide on it right now. He just needs to discover it. He should do a suicide run with a bunch they know of it's there. just to it out. Yes, uh, and they do know it's there. It's there? Ooh, yeah, yeah no, he needs to bomb that. He needs to bomb that, like, soon. Or he needs to be very Wait, confident that he can... There? I don't see it on their... I don't see it on their history. He has a little drawer around it. They have... Black Dutch has three red marks placed on it, and oh, Skazi's okay. drawn a little circle around it, so I definitely oh, think it's... Oh, okay, I don't have map marks on it, that's why. Yeah. yeah Maybe they uh, want to I nuke think... it. Oh, there he goes. Oh, he's, he's bombing the crab. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's fair to use your bombers defensively. If you do that, it can be... No, it, it, it is you, fair. You, you lose less bombers. That's true. I mean, the thing is... And that you can just constantly or... attrition. If that silencer goes for the protector, then it's not a big deal. Although, that has to go for the protector. And Napalm missiles are coming... They have been coming in for a while, and they've been beating back Lowry's forces. Being black touching on top... Actually, getting rid of some of Lowry's wind generators is not the biggest deal at this point, but... Oh! Getting rid of the Tremor! Or very nearly... Yeah, they're gonna probably kill the Tremor. So Napalm Lowry just missiles. loses the Tremor to an Napalm missile. That's interesting, yeah. So he's keeping those things out. I think particularly the Wolverines is what that's going to be really strong against. Oh, nine Goliaths now. 
Yeah. That is a big deal. Anyway, we're about a minute away from shinies, from the nukes. My you can guess see the land is finally being decided as well. The land is that. finally going Black Tush's favor. He has so many Reapers. Yeah, it's I because uh, Loria switched to uh, Goliath production instead of Reaper production. So yeah, but those Goliaths might make cost on Reapers. If they do, that's going to be a big deal. But with the Napalm missiles adding support, I don't know. I think with the Napalm, I think with the Wolverines, the Wolverines is the one thing that's keeping the Ultimatum from really getting in and wrecking those Reapers if a big fight broke out. So I think yeah. it comes down to Ultimatum positioning when they finally decide to engage each other. And Scorpion is being built, sorry, Funnel Web being built, not a mistake, not Scorpion, a Funnel Web mm -hmm. is being built over to the north in Anarchid's base. And no Striders yet for Red Team. They're focusing entirely on the nukes, they're focusing on the missile side, they're focusing on naval missiles. And that's... Skazi has his first nuke up. Now. He's not firing. No. He really needs, he, he needs to do a suicide scout with Swift, Swifts or send in some vultures. He needs, yeah, he's sending, the, sending it in now. Expect a nuke any second. Okay. That's his suicide run. Yep. Suicide run does see the silencer. We finally know that Skazi knows the silencer is there. And that does... Gonna, oh, yeah. just got it. He Anarchid knows. just got their nuke. Skazi well, he can fire. fire it. Well, he fire. As he's seen it, that it's finished. He's gonna have to come on. He has to... Yeah, here it comes. Opening up. Okay, and up it goes. Not sure where it's targeting, though. I think he's going for the center I, of the base. I don't see the target. I think he... Oh. I, he he must be firing at the other nuke. Presumably, but I'm not sure. No, yeah, no, it looks like he's, he's, he's uh, nuking the army. I don't... Oh, yeah, it is. That is going to be useful, at least. Yeah, unfortunately, Goliaths can take a nuke. <laughs> oh, <laughs> or don't they? Yeah, it's they close. do. close. They just barely take it. But now they have a giant pool of water to run through. Yeah, this is an opening. I would have nuked the base. And down though. goes there. Okay, so this is where the protector has to come in. Can the protector do his job? I don't know. I think maybe. Depends on when it fires in. What is he shooting at? Oh, he's shooting the main base. Oh, that's not going to work. The protector is. I don't think the protector's in range. It's not in range. And down goes Scott's <laughs> main base. That is game. No, that's not game. There's still a game? big problem in the center. Has so two much. factories and some, uh, and some windmills. Most of the energy is in the back. Anarchid made the correct choice that Skazi did not. Actually, you're right. It's probably not game because Black Touchy was able to take the bottom, at least. Well, Actually, five wizards. Skazi made the right uh, choice because Skazi did take out the army that now Black Touchy is able to break the line. I mean, yeah, the Goliaths survived, but barely. The only downside is Black Touchy's units are getting mired in this pond. But otherwise, that's basically doing it. Wow. Well, five wyverns and a, uh, uh, two ultimatums. The, the important thing is this is going to stall because he can't get through that with that many reapers, not against that many goliaths, which can slow them down, set up positions for the... For the, uh, for the not, not to mention ultimatums. now that tearing that things apart. The annihilators can, uh, can shoot this time. That's true. But he's spamming uh, anti-air now. So what he needs to do is what he's doing right now, down. and this is the really important thing, is the huge horde of welders and masons in the back, which are leapfrogging AA, yes. which can reclaim, which can really take advantage of the new amount of territory he's secured. Yeah, and once what that's done, it? I think that's going to solidify it. I, I don't know why there's a game for Skazi, again? because that was, that, was a call, that was a very poor call on my part. You're exactly right. This is not game for Skazi. This is not game at all. Because Skazi and Black Judge are still actually quite ahead by about 50 metal in total. No, yeah, he loses his factory, he doesn't enough. have reinforcements. So oh, and a shiny coming Zero down. Counts. There we go, taking out Lowry's base. Nice target choice there. Of course, where Anarchy decides to shoot their next silencer, or the next missile that remains to be seen. Oh, doesn't matter, because it looks like a resignation is forthcoming. And Scotty and Blackjashi are going to win game one. 40 minutes in. To be fair, I think if... um. If an Arcid had placed his second nuke uh, just around the wind, around the edge of the uh, anti nuke and managed to get another good connection, they would have been able to stay in that. They still had enough of a Goliath army to beat the Reapers off, and they had the superfusion. And as long as they had the superfusion, uh, if they can take out enough of the enemy with their second nuke, enough of they could take out that big line of fusions at the back, they could have stayed in that. But I can understand taking that much of a hit; it would have been really hard fought after such a long slog of a game. Why they would resign? Yeah. 
Oh man, I think... Wow. Like, just wow. I... <laughs> well done, Spazzy and Black Dutchy. That was... Yeah. That, that was pulled out well. But on and the other hand... Was down to the line. That was just so close forward. But they built their nuke too far forward. You don't need to build your nuke there. I mean, Laurie had this huge amount of uh, nano towers. He could have, mm -hmm. you know, he could have easily have put that up. Or he even given some uh, to... Um, uh, given some over to... to an, uh, yeah, it's just... Maybe they don't know it, the it, silencer range offhand. The silencer do have um, max range, right? I think, I think if anything, people are going to assume that the silencer has infinite range and not realize that it actually has a limited range. I think a lot of people are going to say, wait, the silencer has a max range? Um, rather than putting it too far forward and going, oh, well, I want to make sure it gets in there. Oh, well, it's 72,000 so, yeah. anyway. I mean, 72,000 range, I think 72,000 would mean from one corner to the other of, like, I want to say 24 by 24. I remember... They can reach from one end of speed metal to the other, so it doesn't really. Yeah, it's it's a huge. It's effectively distance. infinite. There is a case where if you get a large enough map, we sort of did design it um, in a way, or left that design in that if you have a large enough map, like a really, really large enough map, there can be a point where you can't just sit in your bases and nuke each other from the other end of the enormous be, map. You do need to get a little bit closer. Thirty-two by thirty-two ish, right? Like. That's but, way too big for any practical match. But the point, we, well, we thought that we thought that computers would get more powerful and that Spring would get um, uh, clean and cloded and we'd just get people playing on larger and larger maps. <laughs> I think it sort of went the other way. Computers went um, multi-core, so the processors are actually processors are actually not as powerful uh, individually. And um, yeah, um, Spring did not get more efficient. It just it got less efficient in some ways. Yeah, and also Intel graphics cards. Yeah. There's always that. Yeah, there's and always. And to be fair, ATI graphics cards too. Yeah, ATI, that got really bad over the last few years. Which is strange that it would get worse. But who knows? The whims of the spring developers, who understands? I meant more as that ATI is open GL sport in general. Yeah. It's of course, we'll, we'll, we'll blame ATI, which is what... Which is what JK and the rest of the Spring developers do. They, they blame ATI, not not their own programming, which is fine, okay. Actually, I I understand what they're talking about. Speaking as a, speaking yeah. as a software developer myself, it's... Yeah. There are issues. Okay, so Floris is heading out. Yes, yeah, so I'm... Right. Uh, I'll have to leave you uh, two to it. Well, thanks for joining yes. us, Floris. It was fun. It was definitely... Yeah, I think these have games. been some truly... Great game so far, every one of them. Yeah, the most interesting I've uh, seen in a long time. Yeah, mm. I've definitely felt kind of. Uh, despite the fact that this tournament's been quite small, it's been very. It's made up for its size in its intensity. I <laughs> just definitely. made a sex joke, haven't I? <laughs> uh, now you have. <laughs> now you have. Yes. Okay. Okay, but uh, I'll quit Skype now, and I'll. Uh, Hope to see you during the next tournament. Yeah. I'll uh, watch the replays uh, tonight. Well, yeah, I will be putting these on YouTube sometime tomorrow, probably. Cool. So, see you later then. Yeah. Goodbye, yeah. Floris. Bye. Okay, so we have. What time is it for you again? It's like 10 p.m. It's 11:30. Ah. Okay. Well, anyway. So we, so Zach and I are going to be moving on to game two of this. <laughs> oh my god! I know there's Comet another catcher. game after this, <laughs> and Scuzzy no. picks Comet Catcher Redux. Comet catch. um. Get your popcorn, people! Get your popcorn right now. It's okay. Comet Catcher can be a fast game. It can be. It's possible. Have a sh short game on Comic Catcher. Sometimes it doesn't get out of the um. That's true. Raider phase. Raider phase. Like five mm -hmm. ten minutes. Yep. Okay, actually, you know, some points about the way that OpenGL is set up. Like the thing is, 
later OpenGL. I think you can, as long as you don't do any of NVIDIA's Pragma stuff, make it work on both. As long as you don't do NVIDIA's Pragma stuff and make sure that all floats have points on them, like you're something point zero if you're going to have something like an integer, but in a float value or a vector. I think that works. I, I've, I've managed to write code that seems to work fine for, or write code or C code that works fine for both. And it's, it seems like if it's more shader based, it, it works a bit better. I'm not sure if FFP is just the problem and Spring uses a lot of fixed function pipeline. Mm. Very surprising amount. Would have expected more shaders. Oh well. Yeah, I think it comes from being in development for so long. Yeah, you know? what, 15 years? Yeah, something ridiculous, yeah. yeah. Whereas so, the, so it has a lot of legacy stuff in there where it's not using, yeah. Because shader only was something that came in with OpenGL 3, and that's about eight years old. Yeah. And when you have, uh, you have JK mostly working on shaders and things, on implementing shaders, and when he's doing it, he's, um, he's implementing them only for any video cards. Yeah, which is kind of surprising, because it's not hard as far as I know to do both. I mean, you have to be careful. He just hates it's like, them. You have to he be just careful. Hates that's the thing. You can't use NVIDIA Pragmas. You have to be careful about how you define, like I said, floats. I think that's about it. I think there might be a couple other things about how you set up some of the math or some of the lines. Like, there are some syntactical things you have to be careful about. Mm. But overall, my experience hasn't been too bad. Yeah, there's loads of fixed. I mean, all the graphic stuff that I've worked on is pretty much I've tried to shift it to shaders. If it has mm. no shaders already. Like, mm. say, for example, the the way that the outlines, not outlines, but the way that the, your halo selections work, the blurry halo selections, that that's entirely shader. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because that's all. Although I think that was shader, that was shader before, though. That was actually shader before. I just, mm. I just made it so it went, it took advantage of the shaders for doing masking. Like, what would have been stencils. Next game starting. Yes, it is. Total distraction, total aside. Anyway, back. We're back for game two of... Oh, what the? Inculta? Okay, so... Oh, yeah, right, so Skazi that shows it, and Skazi won. So what am I thinking? Lowry chose Inculta. So we are on a slight... Oh, what am, who am I kidding? Get your popcorn, people. I have no idea how long this is going to take. At least it's not Comet Catcher. Oh yeah, I gotta turn bump, I gotta turn Dynamic Water back on. Because Bump does not do it right. There we go. Thankfully, whatever issues, because there were issues I noticed with Dynamic Water if you were zoomed out at certain angles, but either because of the fact that I have my camera automatically angling up so it faces the map down at full zoom, or because of some change I don't know about besides that, it seems to not cause the problem, but I think it's because of the camera zoom tilt stuff. Because the angle's automatically changing. I'm not yeah. getting extreme angles at high distance. Mm. Anyway, it looks fine, so that, that works at least. It was interesting that they chose to play water again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Terrington's pointing out about, yeah, undefined behavior. That actually is... That's a really good point. Also, it's... There is error detection in GL, but you really have to call for it. Like you have to call GL get error. You have to then check the error codes. You have to cross-reference the error codes. It doesn't throw, that's for sure. It does not throw. And GLSL, if it compiles, it won't throw. It'll give you screwy <laughs> behavior. It'll mess up the display, but it won't throw. It'll never throw. That's one thing that is important to point out. So yeah, you got to be kind of careful how you set that up. And it's difficult to tell a compile time that you've done it wrong. Except shaders. Shaders anyway, kind of easy. We, looks like we have ship, ship, ship and ship. Yeah, Lowry and Anakin both going for C. Or ship. Sorry, I called C in the short, or short form. But yeah, both going for shipyard. And That's interesting. Skazi Black Touchy haven't chosen their sides at all. And also, Anakin and Lowry going for spread. They aren't cornering at all like we saw with... Uh, was it... Well... Like we saw with Orphelius and... No, it was flipped up in Norm. They were the ones that cornered in this map. Anyway, Black Duchy is going for hover and Shkazi going for ship. So, ship, ship, hover, ship. That is... Well, nothing coming up for 
Anarchid so far. Lowry going for Skeeter Snake. Dagger's coming from Black Duchy. Typhoon Snake. Anarchid's going snake. for a Skazi. early Typhoon, yeah. Yeah, so Skazi and so it, Anarchid going for early he's Typhoon. skipping over, uh, over the Raider phase. Well, sort of. I mean, the Typhoon is a little bit wonky because it does do a fair amount of rating, but it is... It's a weird mix. I was about to say in the last game, when you're talking about how it's like Warrior... The thing is, Warrior is an assault with Riot HP in a lot of ways. Like, I often use Warriors as assaults. Yeah, the the Cloak Factory is more versatile in that way in that all of the units can sort of cross over into some of the other roles. Mm -hmm. That's one of the strengths of the factory. But uh, yeah, this this I, honestly, I think the Typhoon's kind of... I think it fits into an interesting role in the game, particularly because it can't shoot underwater, so obviously it has counter mechanics. But I think it's a little bit role confused right now being called an Assault Raider when it also has AoE and Riot capacity. It's, yeah... Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a kill thing thing. It's a kill thing thing. I don't know how better to describe it. I'm sorry. My vocabulary rather degrades when I have only had four hours sleep. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's not that bad. I can subsist it, entirely on casting alone. So as soon as it starts, I should probably crash. Yeah, yeah here we go. We have um, a stub being taken out by uh, some da daggers in the middle of that, which is really yeah, good. Yeah, nice kill there. Nice I mean, catch, yeah. Attempt by the Skeeter to stop them with Disarm, but it's not enough. And over further south, the Typhoon and the Skeeter here not really interacting too much. Yeah, they're really focusing. Black Dutchy and Skazi are both focusing on Laurie to try and sort of power him down because we have this this gap, but it's slowly taking out a metal extractor. Mm -hmm. But the auction's going to be up in time. And this will stop anything else from coming in. Yeah, that's going to be a bit of a pain. Black Dutchy did, does the right move here because he would have gotten trapped in by a Typhoon if he had gone further in. So he just pulled back. So with that, let's see how this works here. I mean, Black Duchy right now, they're doing a nice job with these hovers. I gotta say, they are keeping them alive. They're pulling them back. I like to see that. That's what you want to do. And Skazi built a couple Typhoons. Hasn't really built much. It looks like they're focusing entirely on setting up their raiders, setting up their economy, their commanders building stuff. Possibly in high priority, actually. Not sure. No, there's no priority set right now. Yeah, their commander is taking a lot of resources to do this. While, on the other hand, Anarchid going for another Typhoon. But overall, it looks like the advantage is going to Black Touchy having the hovers. Having that quick response force. Taking out yet another... Going for yet another sub, but the Typhoon in the way! That Typhoon is going to be an issue. There was, yeah, those daggers need to pull back. That Typhoon is just going to kill them if they're not careful. Yeah, if they could sort of group off and sort of snipe it down, they'd do alright. But here comes a sub, which should be able to help. If that can, if that can yeah. just snipe it out without getting hit itself. Slow it down, and then from there, it should be a fairly simple matter of just finishing the rest of it off. Yeah, that slows yeah, that right down. Yeah, two typhoons here. Plus all gone. the daggers. Yep. Although the daggers actually not taken up. The, the remaining typhoons certainly will. Slow down enough, the other typhoons can catch up. And the snake will finish it off if it hasn't already. And that... Oops. That'll do it. One thing I noticed about dynamic water, it seems to mess up with health bars for some reason. Yeah, because it's using a lot of th things. Te that's a technical term. Yeah. Kind of sucks. I know it's very CPU driven, but it's like... Yeah. Health water, I can't reduce the transparent... I can't increase transparency. Anyway... You can try it's reflective water. I but, um... Could, but it's, it's nice looking. Dynamic water's so pretty. <laughs> yeah. You get waves. But oh, we see, waves. um... The commander, sorry, in the north, uh, the commander got dived by all these uh, daggers. Black Duchy's really sort of took advantage of all of his um, uh, his daggers he'd been building up, yeah, just the dived the commander and, and took it out, even though it had two um, urchins defending it. And that's a real swing in his favor, but he's lost his momentum, he's lost his dagger ball, so he needs to be careful to make sure that he can still contest territory even with the reduced forces. Well, it looks like it's not even a concern right now. Lowry isn't really pushing. They're building hunters, but... As long as those can be avoided, they're fairly slow. That's not the biggest deal. And the snakes can yeah, be he's... sniped out. I mean, it looks like Black Touch is going to snipe out yet another snake. There's nothing really to defend. And yeah, actually, it's facing the direction. Anarchist Commander coming in here, too. That snake is running away. At this point, it looks like the daggers are being pulled. They're being lured in. Yeah, they're definitely being lured in. Actually, they've. Black Touch is not paying enough attention. Losing a couple daggers here. Trying to take out snakes. That's not worth it. Pull back. Actually, wait. Well, no, still pull back. You're making it yeah, through, but I, pull back nonetheless. I think it's 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 it, it, it's good to go in and snipe snakes when you can. 
uh, in this sort of situation, but um, but that was really yeah, close. Yeah, it, it it was he he's, he needs to be, keep building up his daggers again so he can do another big thing like that. Losing them all to the commander means that he can't afford to risk anymore. He needs to keep his attrition low. Mm -hmm. And here we have uh, Laurie's um, snake just completely harassing out these typhoons. And not much really to defending against. I mean, the daggers are up front of the north. The daggers are being pulled back, so that'll, that'll help. And he's got his own snakes coming in, so. Yeah, I mean, Lowry, they're still kind of behind thanks to the loss of their commander and lost that territory to the north. But Anarchy's yeah. making up for it. I mean, he Anarchy's is really just, just gonna say that. not letting that, that stop either of them. So you're gonna take out Lowry? Okay, well, I'll just take my chance. Yeah, you see, Anarchy's trying to build. Um, Plenty of typhoons, and he's also building um, hunters. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's trying to establish that area with mobile units where he's um he's actually pushing in too far. I reckon here. I think you should pull back. Lowry. Lowry, yeah. Lowry is trying to um he, he should pull back and send at least one of his mar mariners build more, I guess, because he's actually got plenty of metal mm -hmm. and just secure that territory. But he's he's actually pushing in really too far, and I think he's going to get killed by these yeah because the, the hunter does not do well above ground. It's called a riot unit, but it's an underwater riot unit. It doesn't really do much against above ground stuff. It deals so little damage. In large groups, they're awesome. But with one, they are not a type counter. And they're not a strong type counter. The Typhoon is a better type counter than that is. The part of it is that the uh, projectiles are so slow, so the fast and nimble dagger can dodge them quite easily. And now you see this Typhoon retreating. The typhoons are very strong when retreating because they have a bit of range and they have a bit of AoE and a lot of firepower. But if Scuzzy can intercept them with his snakes, which he just managed to miss doing. Oh well. Oh well, but over the south side we have typhoons coming in trying to take stuff out. And the typhoons, one of them, oh this one's over here actually, both of them are in good shape. Though there is a snake coming in to try to snipe them, but yet sniped itself. Yeah, and now um, uh, Skazi's commander is seriously uh, exposed. Oh yeah, Skazi's commander is in a terrible position right now. Not sure how that's going to be handled really. It looks like Skazi's commander is basically... He's pulling back to the to the torpedo well, line. Half health. Yeah, he's all right. Well, Skazi's like quite as fine. The typhoon, because the typhoons can't hit him, so he's all right. Yeah, we see the big, big dagger ball built up again, and it swept through and took out some territory. The commander X still r remaining unreclaimed, and Black Duchess has a big has a big force of, of quills in the north, which can are very close now to. They're already starting to reclaim, and they're very close now to just leapfrog a little bit forward, take that wreck, and ensure that um, Laurie never gets his hands on it again. That would be a very powerful thing if it managed to pull off, and it looks like that. Yeah, it's one more leapfrog to do that too, or but he's none if it can be risky. Yeah, it looks like he's pulling back just to reclaim, and I suppose he does have some unreclaimed metal extractors. He has two behind his line of three um, uh, urchins, and he has another three up uh, along the north. So yeah, I mean, I suppose there's plenty of territory to take before he goes and goes to that and overextends himself. Mm -hmm. Who we have and an air, air switch, switch over from Anarchid. Totally missed that when it came in, but yeah, air switch from Anarchid, and also enforcers will be coming in pretty soon for Anarchid as well. So Anarchid's really rushing to the late game stuff. Well, mid-game stuff. But yeah, the the higher tech sea or higher tech ships. Looks like they're going version. in to force Lori out again though. <coughs> mm-hmm. And actually, Urchin's coming in here, and these Yeah, Skazi coming in with the subs. Nice sniping job here too. Pulling Lowry just all the way around wherever they want to. While at the same time Dagger's going to the north, just to double check that nothing is around that commander wreck. Securing that commander wreck nicely. And probably sweeping from there as well. Yeah, the commander yeah, has I think he's going to have trouble with this uh, Stardust. Maybe. The Halberd should block it, though. Although the window's open. The window's closed. That's the problem. Yeah, the army's moved in position. The bombers have started. They're bombing the out the uh, subs, but they'll go ahead. That enforcer is going to be the biggest problem, I think. Like, it's just going to tear them all apart. As you can see, it just already took out at range for the daggers. And that's just at range, completely safe for free. Yeah, you can see it's also going to be able to easily bombard the, out these urchins. Yeah, the problem if Skeeters, he even bothers to bombard them. Skeeters are what so you need to beat that. Actually, that's the yeah, thing. Yeah, but he has he has so many typhoons. Nah, no, nah, that's true. But still, Skeeters are pretty much the counter to enforcers, as far as I can tell. Yeah, they have very good anti-heavy capacity because they disarm. Yeah, just well, those ravens are taking a fair amount of damage, but not enough to really kill them. 
Yeah, they're all combining their forces on the north. I mean, Skazi needs to make something happen. He needs to take out the command. Uh, he needs to take out um, Anarchy's commander in the south. He needs to take some territory, or he needs to help his ally. And he's helping by putting some uh, AA boats into position, which will cut off any of these bombers from doing their bombing runs anymore. But I think he needs to invest a little bit more in this. Otherwise, mm -hmm. yeah, Black Dutchy could lose his base. Although, without having any of the support forces from before, it looks like those daggers can just come in for free. But even then, the Typhoons just can't. No, Typhoons are enough. The Enforcer is down, however, and that's down inside of Red Team's territory, which is good to see. Although, what was Red Team's territory, now it's kind of contested. Yeah, I'm not sure how much that matters. I mean, there's, there's 5k reclaim, or even more on the map. 5.5k. So, yeah, they need to start getting some more constructors out. You see the big yeah. ball of um, quills also, is going to be really important. So northeast side, Riot, Torpedo, Frigate, or Hunter coming in from the northeast side to just raid out. Because why not? Nothing is there. Raid or Scout, not quite sure which, but there's nothing there to stop it. Mm. And it looks like the Dagger Ball is going on land, trying to avoid getting hit. Surprise is not going down to get repaired, though. And there is some... Oh, what the heck? What is calling for the reclaim? Oh, it's the Caretaker calling for reclaim. Or is it? Oh, no, 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 never mind. There's a bunch of Mariners that are going to be reclaiming the center of the map fairly <coughs> soon for Lowry. So Lowry is pushing to take that center. The Ravens are hitting critical mass now. We can see that there are seven of them, so they can start doing some serious damage. Oh, and yeah, that's factory down. That's commander easily down. Oh, two commanders down, one run. That's yeah, scary. but um, the, a, the a boats, the thing is, a boats are really, really strong. And you can also see some uh, flails up now. So that should help put, you know, <coughs> help to um, make an Arcid's switch uh, a lot less advantageous. Mm hmm. Well, it looks like from here it's just. Another enforcer coming in, but overall, north side is definitely strong, and Lowry has taken it. Lowry is getting their commander. They are getting the commander wrecked. That's 500 metal to Lowry. So unfortunately for Black Dutch, they did not manage to hold that. And actually, this one, Anarchy and Lowry have the economic advantage. They're actually holding that up pretty well. And on a map like this, this map is actually small enough and without the terrain issues that DSD brings with it, or terrain complications that DSD brings with it, Anakin and Lowry are really showing their power in the mid to late <laughs> game. And they're showing how their macro game really plays out. Right, there isn't the same level of blocking, there isn't the same room just to put up a few walls, stop your phone from getting through. This is, this is flat and pretty easy to get through. You can see it's really interesting how um, Black Duchy in fact, all the hover players, whereas on land you tend to transition from dagger into um, scalpel or mace or both. Here you transition um, to Halberd. Here it's just here you transition to Halberd, which is really fascinating to me because it's not something you do on land. Here we see a, a dive on by um, some ravens. No, yeah. I thought it was going to go after the commander, but well, they still. I, I guess they can't see it. Yeah, no, I, I guess they can't see oh, it. Oh yeah, it's it. underwater. Yeah, good luck yeah. with that. <clears throat> Hmm. Well, even we see. A, sorry, we see a very uh, strong mixed force up up the north. Yeah, uh, strong mixed ship force. Crusaders, typhoons, <laughs> a couple hunters for good measure, and I think an enforcer a bit further south. And crusaders from both Lowry and Anarchid, just raining death down and everything. The halberds. This is where they're going to really shine, especially if they screen the, the daggers. In the south, though, we see a ton of subs snapping out these um, surface ships. Mm hmm. Yeah, no hunters around here. Deal with that, surprisingly. And actually, Skazi is doing a lot to pull in. And Black Touchy, on the other hand, is just trying to hold their own as best as possible, but it's not not looking great. And the Halberds, they are there for screening. They are, however, not on fire state. They're not in a whole fire state. I keep saying this. Hold fire Halberds until you really want them to fire. But that's not what's happening right now. Where's the, okay, so we have the daggers, but not a whole lot. It's like 12 daggers. That's Scott not is enough. Pulling his ships back now to deal with this. Yeah, most of them pulling back. Still the shredder down south, but that's going to go down to the enforcers, and otherwise everything's going to get just torn to shreds. Laurie's Saber army is still, is still very vulnerable to uh, subs because it's optimized versus hovers. Oh, yeah, that's true. The snakes, however, are not catching up. They're actually. Whoa, a couple of them are going back south again. Scott's moving back to defend themselves. 
Yeah, they're trying really to indecisive. balance between the two. I think that uh, Black Dutchie's army, um, it's not. I don't think his hovers are capable on their own for to beat beat, beat back this, this big mixed ship army. So uh, Anarchid, because Skazi had to pull back, Anarchid's just walking in. Yeah, and that's the problem that Skazi can't really choose where to go, not easily anyway. I think this is going to basically do it. I don't know if there's there might be one more battle in red team. But I think this is basically going to just do it for them because that's this is taking a lot of territory now. It's interesting that Anarchid and Laurie picked this map, didn't they? Yes, they did. They're clearly right, prepared to play. It. Yeah, they were clearly prepared to play um C. Yeah, and Penetrator, see an oh, Wow. Penetrator, yeah. That you don't that's see often. You need to escalate. When you're facing that kind of art big artillery push with a huge number of salts, you need to escalate that way. And you can see how scared Laurie is. He's pulling back all of his um, uh, Typhoons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the Crusaders, I think, have... A, the Crusaders have approximately the same range. Yeah, they're 20 range lower. But still, but that's... Less accurate. Yeah, that's instant hit weapon too. So overall, that is really not good for them. Whereas when it comes down to these guys, it's just... And in the south, actually, Skazi pulling back from the south. Getting... Well, getting a few Typhoons, Crusaders. The Snakes are mostly down, but able to reclaim back into a good position. Actually pushing a lot of that metal in. In fact, starting to excess a little bit, but getting a lot of Mariners to continue pushing in. And Skeeters as so, well to get rid of the Enforcers. Nice choice he's there, accessing two, He's accessing two Black Dachi, which is um, means that the... It's not going to waste. Oh, okay, right. That's how it works. Although Black Touchy's also accessing, so it will go to waste eventually if too much of it's shifted over. Uh, Black Touchy's is not oh, accessing no, right now. Right. Yeah, Black Touchy's not accessing. And now I need to... Okay, so Black Touchy actually does have the biggest army by cost, though, like you said before, it's kind of optimized poorly. But still, that's... Yeah, with that pe the Penetrators just coming in, ripping apart these forces, that's, that's kind of a big deal. This is forcing Laurie's hand. Laurie needs to do something here, so he's pushing in. Uh, th and the sort of moving the counter. Yeah, I'm not sure that they can do that versus Typhoons. No, especially with the Penetrators. Oh, the Penetrators are going around. Didn't quite work. The Typhoons did not fall for it. The Penetrators are going around the other side. It looks like they were trying to get the Typhoons into a tunnel and then just shred them with the Penetrators beam. I can tell you what, they really should be up on there if he can spend the time to get them up there. They put them up on, on the, the cliff. Hill? Yeah. Yeah. They can't be shot up there, and they have, you know... Can they go up there? They can, they can see over. barely go up there. There's they, a small path. They can go up there. They can definitely go up there. It doesn't matter, though, because that's not what's happening. The Penetrator is going down. Didn't get in a position to make a corridor of death out of those Typhoons. It's still doing some damage, but it's not quite enough. Yeah, we wow, see some uh, Claymores coming in now. Claymores might be able to do the AOE damage they yep. need. We saw what happened last time. We did, and it was extremely entertaining. <laughs> Because those, this those Typhoons are so tightly packed that their only hope right now is to do some sort of splash damage. Yeah, and the Penetrator looks like it's trying not to get friendly fire. Doesn't care anymore, <laughs> though. Just going for it. Yeah, no, that was enough. And the Typhoons are dead. Looks like one more Penetrator shot before this is all over. And now it's... Oh, no, that's Claymore. Never mind. Now it's all over. <coughs> yeah, that... Laurie's really solidified his position in the map, though. He has tons of defenses. These are going to be very slow to break through. They can be broken through with the Penetrators and the Halberds. He has the right army to do this, but he needs to use this Reclaim, which is what he's doing right now. Black Duchy has a ton of Reclaim. He needs to turn that into an army, and he needs to use it, probably against an Archid, who has a lot less static defenses. Yeah, although that's like that's 5,000 metal right there. <laughs> Wow, so yeah, this is that was a major mistake by Lowry. I mean, I can see what you mean by put force in the hand, but that was that played <coughs> entirely into Black Dutchie's hand. Perfect. Mm. Exactly what they wanted. And now we can see the penetrators are back in position to rip apart the static defense line, which I think if he can afford to play the attrition game, and he can afford to just play the attrition game while he turns this uh, reclaim into an army himself, uh, yeah, he might be all right. Especially the claymores. Although we do see... What the? Oh, a reef? How did I miss that? Apparently a Strider Hub was already built and a reef was set up on top of that. It's got its drones, it's got its artillery. I think after the last game they're like, nope, I'm not going to wait to get to late game. As soon as it looks like it's going like to storm. 20 minutes. Sent. 20 minutes, just yep. go for it. That's a good plan. It's 20 minutes exactly now, there we go. 
That's definitely a good plan. However, the problem is Skeeters. Although I think the Skeeters are probably going to die before it becomes... Oh, no, never mind. There's a lot of Skeeters. My mistake. It's, it's a screaming... It's a screen, screen, screening force, though. He's got this big screening force in front of it. I don't think anything's going to be able to get Wait, are there... It. Not unless... What the heck is firing all those missiles? That's not just the Reef. Oh, no, that was just the Reef. Never mind. There's Reef firing another missile off. It just fired it looked like its own forces. No, it, it fires... It predicts sort of... Oh, no, there is a reef I on the other fires. side. I was right, actually. There's Both sides oh. have a reef. And actually... And the sniper sub. Yeah, Warlord... The battleship. Sniper sub as well? Oh, yeah, sniper sub on top of that. And the battleship. Sniper really? sub's a good thing to pick against that kind of a, a <sighs> big ship force. At least the Especially escalation the... is working out this time. In a timely fashion. Yeah. Uh, the reef's exposed, though. Oh, yeah, and the drones aren't even... Oh, the drones are coming in. Oh, no, that... Skazi's reef taking quite a lot of damage there. So the Shredder's doing a good job against the drones, but even then, this is all quite new to me. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen the reef before. I've gone to be honest. I have not ever seen a reef built before. Or the Yeah, warlord. I'd go with Warlords myself. I, warlords, I think, are, are much stronger. Reef is reef can be better for land bombardment because it has its own scouting and it has um, mm -hmm. and the the drones can be quite strong. But with Shredders already up in the air, I'm not sure that um that they tend to shoot the drones down. But he's doing a good job of escorting this. Yeah, and it's actually working out quite nicely. Over in the southeast, we're seeing a lot of damage dealt, and Snake's coming in with... Oh, getting rid of the sniper sub, though, because Anna <coughs> Lowry had built a sniper sub of their own. I'm not really looking at them too much, but yeah, Lowry built a sniper sub, and... And Arkin has a huge Mariner force, which is now taking the... Reclaiming the middle of the map. 4,000 reclaim there. Oh, wow. Yeah, both sides massively on reclaim. Which is... Of yeah, course, of course, but still. Laurie's gone mass sniper snub, which is the appropriate response to penetrators. And it looks like that will be coming in handy as well. Those halberds can't do anything about it, the penetrators can't do anything about that. The reef's finally been beaten away, and it's going to go down now to subs. All those claymores. The reef in the south. The claymores are still a bit of an issue. I mean, for the sniper subs, I mean. Yeah, yeah, right. So he's, he's, he's busting through with halberds to tank the shots and then using claymores to take out the sniper subs. This is really effective. And he's, his penetrators are staying up. Penetrators, exactly. if, you, if you can get a scout on the penetrators and snipe them down with the sniper subs, sniper subs are totally the answer. They're immune to penetrators and they outrange them. Um, do they actually? Uh, the no, they don't outrange them. They have about the same range. But the claymore but you is need too to close. And it doesn't matter because they're immune. But the claymore, that's the problem. And over to the mm. south, that reef, a second reef, however, has come in. And the Warlord is done. The first Warlord is done, the second Warlord is under construction. I think the Warlord's a stronger choice here. Well, I guess I'll find out. Is it... Oh, it's giant cannons. Okay. How often is a fire? Oh, ten seconds a shot. It's and like Skazi a behemoth. loses the reef. It's it's more powerful than a behemoth. If you're going to pick between making a behemoth and making a Warlord, um, a warlord? If, you can, if, the, if there's an appropriate puddle, make a Warlord. Warlords are incredibly strong. Most um, ships are actually balanced like statics ah. because they're in the sea. They're balanced with the same power ratios as statics. Uh, so that the, this is why the shred is so strong because it's balanced at the same level as a razor's kiss at the, mm -hmm. at the same cost amount because it's so limited in territory. Right, that explains the swinging nature of sea battles. Although flails, what are these flails trying to do? Oh, I guess they're trying to get rid of the drones. He's trying to snipe out these um, reefs again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the flails are shooting at the drones. He's trying to snipe out the reefs, and he's got two sniper subs and a bunch of um, smaller subs there. It looks like it's working. But well, he needs to the make sure he's warlord. And Lowry, yeah. thanks to the loss of those sniper subs, hasn't really gotten much to do. But it looks like... Did the penetrators go down? No, they didn't. No, they certainly did not. There's ten penetrators. Just I think he's tearing apart the center. Honestly feels, I, think it, I think he's honestly building too many penetrators. But uh, they're definitely affected. Well, I think if they're doing the job, I don't know how much it matters, honestly. It's a matter of, I mean, obviously, later on, they might screw up. Might be a mistake. But at this point, yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. At this point, they are doing the trick. Although, yeah, I guess, well, there is the fact, that, yeah, there are air forces coming in. It's going to be a bit of a problem. And not going down, although flails are coming into escort at the last second. Not sure this is going to work. Penetrators are heavily damaged, though. Flails are very strong, but if you bunch them up, they'll all shoot at, the, at a single um, yeah, and then miss. Raven and waste all of their shots. You need to spread them out. And this is where Shredders are actually a lot more powerful. He, he lost a lot of... over half of his penetrators there. Yeah, it went down from 10 to 4. That was a huge blow. However, they, the penetrators are no longer the focus. We can see the um, uh, Warlord versus the um, 
close to the reefs here. You can see how powerful the warlord is. Oh yeah. It's just ripping these through these guys. While you have the um, shredders there to completely nullify the um, uh, drones. Mm hmm. And that's just. Oh wow. Yeah, that takes out most of their health in one go. Are there. Is there two explosions to that? Two explosions? Like, it seems like it's. The shots are explosive. Oh, I see. No, it's just that there's three volleys. That's what it is. There's nine it's, shots total. Yeah. It shoots nine shots. It's oh, so it's three behemoths strong. at once in one unit. Yes, it is so strong. Oh, wow. I think he really should have gone for that rather than go going for the... Because they're, they're really strong if they can get the drones up, but if there's any sort of AA in the area, um, it's more they have secondary utility in that they have repair oh. pads for air. And yeah, that was have Yeah, but... Yeah. yeah. They have scouting capacity. They have um, sort of these other things. But if you want brute force, if you want strong power, go for a warlord. Right, well, it looks like Black Well, they're still going for Penetrators a fair amount. They have, they are going for more even, like Halberd, Dagger, with some Claymore. Well, we're still getting a lot of Sniper Subs and Typhoons. Servants and Typhoons coming in from Lowry. And Anarchy going entirely for Hunter. Pretty much entirely Hunter and Mariner. Well, Skazi, on the other hand, going for... Well, quite a lot. And we are getting a Hovercraft in from Lowry. No, that's already been built. Never mind. Air switch from Anarchid, that's what I'm going to say. Or, no. It was a new factory. It was a factory switched out. Air <laughs> switch from Black Duchy, that's what it is. Right. Sorry, I was going to track of four players. But yeah, air switch from that Black Duchy coming in. And more reefs coming in from both players, but the Warlords gotten rid of both reefs so far. There's two Warlords now. Skazi needs to get into one on the back line. I think the Warlords, with appropriate screening, um, can, yeah, really, really push through. But Skazi sent his uh, sub force out to do some, uh, to try and get some damage done um, and some raiding done. The hunters, not the best choice. He's, he's run straight into a pack of hunters. Should have really kept that back to screen for the warlord because subs are excellent for screening uh, against enemy attacks for warlord, from war, uh, on warlords because any sort of underwater force you send against the warlord will be sniped by them, and any sort of uh, land units will be sniped by them, and the warlord can underwater. easily defend itself. Yeah, the oh, if you have... subs can kill. Them oh yeah, right. Things. Yeah. And the wall can easily defend itself against um, uh, anything like a hunter or anything, any of the counters to subs. Yeah, and it looks like Penetrators are doing fine. I mean, they are still a reduced number from before, but still doing fine. The north side, fairly well handled. Black Touchy still yeah. pulling in a lot. I, gotta... I, think, I think it was necessary for him to... Um... I, no, I, I think it was necessary for him to have help from Skazi a little bit, but... He's doing very well with just hovercraft, with primarily uh, Claymore, mm. Halberd, and Penetrator, oh, and which now, is surprising to me, and nice to see. Yeah, but two Warlords and a Reef coming from Skazi, I and mean, that's really what's distracting Anarchid right now, is all these Strider-class ships coming in here. Mm. And Black Touch is going for the mass force with the Penetrators. Yeah, the Penetrators with with the Halberd screen is really strong, because... Um, the, the, the Halberds are just taking all, taking all the shots. Yeah. And they also provide good scouting, and if there's any ever an opening, they can be an assault force. It's so strong uh, with, uh, with artillery. Here we have an ultimatum. Yeah, an ultimatum, okay. <laughs> it's but uh, it's getting killed by the subs. <laughs> Where? <laughs> uh, it's down the bottom of the map near the Warlord. He was trying to snipe the Warlord with the ultimatum, but he doesn't realize that Sonar can see through Cloak. Oh. Yeah, I don't even see that, actually. It's unfortunate. I completely missed that. Sorry, guys. Yeah, it's, it was not very unimpressive. It, its corpses are currently sitting underneath the, the wall at the bottom of the map. Oh, yeah, it's being nicely reclaimed. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess it wasn't important enough. Didn't really matter. But yeah, this looks like Skazi and Black Touchy managing to pull back. And that was wise choice of escalation. At least that Warlord seems to have done it. The Reef was kind of even, but the Warlord definitely turned it around. And that's game and match. Anarchid and Lowry go to the bronze match with Google Frog and Aquanim. Okay. That's how it goes then. I didn't expect that, but yeah, apparently that's... That is the match. <laughs> Very impressive comeback. Very impressive. They were yeah. behind for most of that game, I think, until they switched. I think the choice was Warlord over Reef. Reef has a lot of secondary utility, it's an anti-nuke, it has air repair pads, it has radar, it has um, all sorts of things. 
uh, which give it, and he can distract shots in a way that he, way that Warlord can't. It can distract AA in a way that Warlord can't. All these sort of utility things, but the Warlord's just stronger. It's stronger in straight up fight. Yeah, it is. So next is going to be Anarchist Lowry and Goofrog acronym because bronze match I always do after semifinals. Sheesh. I mean, at least it was only two games and not three, so it still stayed within about an hour. <laughs> 